from the Pile Media Venture Studios in Noblesville, Indiana. This is the Jacob Pyle Show with tonight's guest, author Sally Marks, and the host of our show, Jacob Pyle. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Jacob Pyle Show. My name is Jacob Pyle. For the next 30 minutes, unscripted discussions, but with a difference. No shouting, no cussing. All topics that we are discussing on the show have been approved by me before the show taping. When I was a kid, I was like many of you growing up watching the television show Sesame Street. One of my favorite characters on that show was Oscar the Grouch. Of course, as most of you know, Oscar lives in a trash can. He loves trash, he loves anything dirty or anything nasty. He also loved making all the residents on Sesame Street miserable, hence why his name is Oscar the Grouch. And in today's world and in today's society, and I apologize in advance if this statement offends anybody, while it doesn't quite look like it, there are many Oscar the Grouches on our streets today. A lot of people who are sad, a lot of people who are angry, a lot of people who are mad. If you're watching this, and I don't mean to offend anybody with what I just said, there is a way you can get rid of the grouchiness inside of you. My guest has a book out entitled Erase Negativity and Embrace the Magic Within, published by CreateSpace and can be found on many bookstores and websites. Joining us now via Zoom is my special guest for tonight, the author of that book, Sally Marks. Welcome to our show. Hi, Jacob. It's great to be here. All right. So go ahead and tell us a little something about yourself. I'm a... Well, I am the author of the book you just talked about, the co-author, uh, Race Negativity, Embrace the Magic Within. I'm also a comedy writer and public relations specialist and a motivational speaker. And just my mission is to try to make the world a little happier place. Now, how did you get your start as an author? Well, I, I started be as a journalist and writing articles and I uh, thought about at that time writing for newspapers but the you know so much of the news was negative and and so I thought I didn't know really what I was going to do and then I learned about public relations which is really more news in a in a more positive way and then from there articles and then eventually uh, this book and uh, if you want, I can tell you a little bit as far as why I wrote the book. Uh, my friend Jackie and I are big uh, self-help, um, you know, very interested in how to make ourselves better, how to improve the world. And we were talking on the phone, and uh, we were talking about, well, what it, what's it take to make someone to become more optimistic? Because just as you were talking about Oscar the Grouch, not everybody can just embrace a happy message, you know, maybe they had an unhappy childhood, they uh, experienced a lot of difficult things in their lives and couldn't really make that shift. So one of us said they need to learn how to erase their negativity. And at that moment, the word erase negativity kind of hung in the air. We were talking on the phone and we both got goosebumps at the exact same time. And the hair on my arm, and I have really hairy arms, you can't tell by my long sleeve shirt, stood straight up and we knew at that moment that the book needed to be written and the universe was calling on us to write it and that we had the title awesome now obviously we don't want to give away anything from the book you'll have to purchase the book to find out how to do all that but can you give us a general look on key ways you can get rid of the negativity you have in your life sure i i tell people that even if they don't do anything else, um, if they just take away three little points, they'll be well on their way to erasing negativity. And, and this is more geared toward our own negativity because it, it, as much as we would like to, we can't change other people's negativity or otherwise they'd be richer than Oprah if I came up with that plan. But anyway, the um, first one really um, is to acknowledge that negativity exists around us. Because if you think that, in fact, many people, like if you were to ask Oscar the Grouchy, you'd probably say, I, I'm not negative, I'm not grouchy. If you don't 
aren't able to acknowledge it, then you can't help fix it. So the first thing I tell people is to become aware. And, uh, and then from there, you can start um, improving it a little bit. And something that a lot of people are not aware of, and I don't know who did the counting for this, but they say we have between 40,000 and 65,000 thoughts a day. And out of those thoughts, more than 80% are negative, and 95% of that 80% just keep recycling over and over again, these negative messages that get stuck in our brain, even when we sleep. And so um, realizing, number one, you know, that there is negativity around, so you can uh, become aware and try to do things to avoid it. So that, that's the first step. Uh, second one is what I call erase and replace. And that's where you take um, a negative thought, because again, so much of this is what we do to ourselves, and replace it with something uh, perhaps more uplifting. And so for my case, I, a common one I've done, I gained weight. I, I was thin all my life till I hit 50, and then I started to I gained weight. And I would say, oh, I'm so fat, I'm so this, I'd be so disappointed in myself. So instead I would say, I love it when I make happy choices, you know, healthy choices. And so taking something negative and turning it into something more positive and or at least looking at it in a different perspective. And then the last one is to smile. And uh, I get a lot of static over this one. But really, we know now from different studies that we release endorphins when we smile, even if we don't want to. And that just the very act of it does help make us uh, less grouchy. And then, of course, it has that effect when other people see us and they see us smile, they're more likely to smile, too. So the first three things is acknowledge the negativity so you can try to take steps to avoid it, erase that negative thing and replace it with something more positive and smile. And so those are uh, three things that I, anybody can do. I heard someone say one time, and this is true, a smile is just as contagious as the flu is. And I, I believe it's true. If, one, if you, I mean, like pretty much, um, like I used to work at McDonald's, and one thing I learned from working at McDonald's is if you, if, if you smile, the other customers will smile too. If you decide that you want to be grouchy and all day, then that's how the customers are going to feel. So really, you have to really, um, yeah. I mean, like you said, you have to learn to be able to control your feelings in a way where it makes you happy and at the same time makes others around you happy as well. Like I'm not saying that you can't make everybody happy. That's not the point I'm getting at here, but. You have to get it to where you're. You have to sm You have to get it to the point where people are happy to be around you. They want to be. They want to be joyous around you. Is that right? Yes, that's absolutely true. And the nice thing about smiling is it doesn't have to be sincere right away. Sometimes you have to fake it until you can make it. And so even a third grit of teeth. Um, and to me, that the irony of smiling sometimes when I don't want to makes me laugh because I think it's funny. Or, or I like looking at babies and uh, little kids. And so if I'm at the store and I see one, you know, I just smile. And whether they smile back, but then other people see me smile and they think I'm smiling at them. And, and that's fine. They can think that if they want. They just see the smile and they react to it. And it is contagious. I think that's absolutely true. All right. Um, we have about 40 seconds here before we go to break. Where can people, uh, where can people, where exactly can people find your book? Uh, the best place to, is to Google it on Amazon. It's uh, Amazon and then erase negativity and it'll pop up. It's at a few bookstores, too, but the main thing is just Google it on uh, Sally Marks, Erase Negativity, and you'll find it on Amazon. All right, we have to take this first break. When we come back, more we'll have part two of our conversation with Sally Marks. Stay with us. 
Welcome back to the Jacob Pyle Show. We have with us my special guest, Sally Marks, author of Erase Negativity and Embrace the Magic Within, published by CreateSpace and can be found on Amazon and in many bookstores and, we and other websites. Now, um, I'll sh I, I want to share something that happened to me recently. Um, people ask me all the time, why is it you are, are you always so nice to people? There was a period when I was depressed. So, back in 2011, I graduated high school. I was going through a lot of things mentally and emotionally at the time because I, I, was, I knew I wasn't going to be able to see my classmates again. And I had some family issues that I had to deal with, and I had, and I was pretty much living by my by myself at the time because my dad, my dad, I was living with my dad, but my dad was working all the time. So during that stretch between I would say 2011 and 2016, there have been times I've been depressed and times when I got mad at people for little things that should not have been. After my life started coming together, I realized how lucky I was to be here on this earth, and I learned how to be able to swim again. Um, what would be your advice to anybody who's going through that similar situation that I just explained? I think that, you know, everybody is definitely going to have times when they're depressed or, or sad. And I do, t I always say, even though, of course, I would like people to buy the book, that a person that's clinically depressed does need to get help. Because the book is more written for people that have... Um, just their own struggles with negativity and a lot of it is just trying to change your mindset as much as you can even if it's just a little bit um you know taking a little time out um you know maybe at that time in your life hanging out with that one friend that could cheer you up or doing something that makes you feel a little bit better and then just taking that little bit just so you know that you feel better uh, and that can extend. I know when I was um, going through a divorce and, and I got fired from my job and my daughter was acting out, it was a very, very difficult time for me. And when I think about it in retrospect, I couldn't even listen to the music in my van. Just, uh, and then, then one day, you know, little by little, as I, you know, try to read books and do things to make myself feel a little bit better, I realized that I finally was able to turn on the radio and uh, a song um, made me feel a little uplifted. And I thought nobody beside me turned that radio off for those months that I was sad. It's just sometimes just a little thing that you can do where you think, oh, there is hope. You know, yes, maybe yesterday I felt crummy, but hey, this is my favorite song on the radio now. Of course, now we have other things that we can do so we can just pick our songs. We don't have to wait on the radio. But just knowing that there's hope, because that's the biggest problem, I think, with negativity, is it puts you in this space where you think it's never going to get any better. And that's really unrealistic. There's, uh, if, but once you give up hope, then, then there's nothing you can do. So, of course, hanging on to even just that tiny little thread of a hope and then just trying to expand that little by little by little. Speaking of music and um, how you're able to treat it, I I'll tell you what I what I do sometimes if I start feeling that way. Sometimes I'll sing to myself because if I I figure if I sing to myself, you know, others might be able to hear me, and it just makes for a happy moment, even for just those few minutes. It makes for that for that happy moment, like you know. Sometimes, I, I always tell people, you know, sometimes I'll sing when I'm happy, sometimes I'll sing when I'm sad, because, you know, and now, now, I, and now we have, you know, all these apps now where you can listen, work and actually listen to music, so I can turn on, say, I can turn on some uplifting music, and it'll make me, it'll make me feel better, and I'll be happy in knowing that I'm not the only person going through the same struggles. I mean, you know, there's lots of people in this world today that are going through those same struggles. No, that that's absolutely true. And, and for me, you know, I, I think I told you I'm a comedy writer too. I I would make up little songs a lot of from the time I was a kid to when I had my own kids to even now. I'll just go around and sing silly things you know, about, oh, there's no tomatoes in the refrigerator. It doesn't matter, just 
kind of playing with music and, and words and, uh, and why not? It, it does, it activates something else in the brain that takes your mind off of the sadness. So I think singing, um, humming, uh, coming up with, you know, little funny rhymes uh, is, is excellent. And it's using your creativity too. Um, we have, we still got about four more minutes. Um, uh, what would be your advice to anybody who may be going through some kind of struggle and dealing with negativity? I think that, you know, and you alluded to it a little bit of a minute or so ago, that, uh, when there's, um, knowing that, that there's something that you can do about it. It's not like it's, ha the only thing holding it in place is yourself and your own mindset whether it's listening to music turning on a silly movie um, doing something to get you out of that space but it's also good to know that um, for me anyway i i started reading biographies when i was a pretty young kid because i i definitely had some felt bad about myself as a teenager you know crossed eye you know goofy looking kid hair didn't behave. I, I was not the most well-liked kid in the world. And I read stories about other people like Edison and people that had really had tough things, but yet had great breakthroughs in their lives. And I realized I wasn't alone. And that, and I thought, you know what, if they can do it, I can do it. And that was, and I, that's one of the reasons I write uh, books and other things too, because I want people to see examples, not just my examples. The book is, is full of other people's examples of overcoming negativity if they can do it i can do it and and that sense of hope cool all right um so we we got about two more we got about two more minutes minutes here in this segment and it looks like i'm and uh i only got really one more question written down here and we need to fill i need to try to fill some time here um, I'm trying to think. Uh, um, is there any? Or here, I, I thought of something. Is there any? Um, is there any specific? I mean, I I don't know if I asked you this already or not, but if I did, just to say something, and I will. Um, I'll try to come up with something else. But is there any other important key points in this book that you've written that? Um, you might that you might be that 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 might be important to our viewers i think rather than just one you know one or two things like i did mention that I, the book itself is 11 chapters of personal stories of people who had horrible things happen well not always horrible but some of them were horrible and their story and how they went through it and then overcame negativity. And at the end of each chapter, there's a section about how to, um, that person got rid of their negativity and then also how they were able to embrace the magic within. So, um, and, and some of them are very dramatic. They, one was a, a woman who lost her only child. Um, there's a, some about drug addiction, um, alcoholism, but then there's some that are, are more uplifting too. But again, based on the story that, that if this person could um, overcome it, then that meant uh, the reader can overcome it. Because it's kind of set up like um, so many books where there's uh, individual stories. Um, because just reading a bunch of tips on how to be less negative is pretty dry. Even I would say that. So, um, but people's personal stories are very compelling. You know, well, how do they do this? And and um, and they're all walks of life: men, women, uh, different religions, uh, different incomes, very rich, very poor. A, a really, a big a, a myriad of walks of life on how they did it. All right, we have to take this last break. Um, when we come back, um, I will have a preview of. Our, I will have a preview of next week's show for you, and then we will conclude our conversation with Sally Marks. Stay with us. 
welcome back to the Jacob Pyle Show. We have with us my special guest, Sally Marks, author of Erase Negativity and Embrace the Magic Within, published by Create Space. It can be found on many bookstores and websites. I hope you can join us next week on the Jacob Pyle Show, where my guest will be author Jola Valley. All right, so um, so as I men and I as I mentioned in the last segment. Um, you have to understand as we're doing the show, I, I have like a set list of questions and things like that, and then sometimes I have to go off the cuff, which is what we're doing now because we've still got nine minutes of time left to fill. And then I was thinking about all those uh, uplifting stories and stuff like that, and without gi and, and so without giving away any spoilers, is there any good uplifting stories you could share from the book? Oh, sure. I think all of them have an uplifting message. But I, one of the things that I thought would be interesting to your listeners, you know, because we've talked a little bit about erasing negativity, which, again, is our own and starting with our own negativity. And, but the other part of the title is Embrace the Magic Within. And one thing that happened when I was starting to, because there's 11 interviews of different people that, that Jackie and I interviewed, you know, for this book, and it was starting to take some, uh, get some speed to it, and I was getting toward the end, and I just wasn't sure how I was going to end it. It started very uh, dramatic with somebody that had a horrible thing happen, and I thought, you know, and then it kind of shifted to more positive and I was reading a book uh, by a lady named Cynthia Sue Larson and uh, in the book and she was just I was so impressed by what she was right she talked about energy and auras and things and I thought you know I really think she'd be a good person to interview for this book now I didn't know her I, I knew nothing about her except I'd read her book and it had her email. And so I went ahead and uh, mystically uh, got in touch with her, said I would like to interview her. And uh, she, she was very gracious. And she lived in the Bay Area. And it just so happened I was going to the Bay Area. And uh, we made arrangements and met. So it's kind of that once you start shifting your thoughts from negativity instead of, you know, what can't be done or it'll never be done to um, this more world of more hopefulness. And anyway, I, the bottom line is I was able to meet her in person. Uh, we had a very lovely get together and she's one of these people that if you've ever been around somebody, they almost seem to vibrate on a different frequency. They're just so positive, so happy that you just feel uplifted being around them and just the fact that just from reading this book that I was able to get in touch with her I was able to actually be in the same city with her in interview or in person and then from there we worked together and she shared you know very unique story about herself um but but that's part of the magic that and not magic in the like woohoo sense but just in the kind happy sense that once you start making these shifts from negativity, you do find yourself more in line, so you can embrace the magic within um, yourself and the world, because we all do vibrate on different levels. So Cynthia's um, Cynthia Sue Larson's interview, and she was uh, just a fascinating person. I, it, she uh, is a physicist, but she's also very spiritual and very kind and talking about some unhappiness in her own life as a as a baby and a child and she could feel different energies um if somebody argued you know it would um, she would actually see lights and hear things um, i think it's I, I have to look at the book again but um where she could feel all this and uh, but then she's just become such a wonderful wonderful um person and helping others, but her, just even being able to meet her and interview her and um, how she embraced life was very, very encouraging to me. So I, I that's my favorite chapter in the book. Uh, it's uh, She's not the type of person you're gonna normally meet. 
the other people were pretty much um, might not be the type of people you'd meet either. But again, I guess that's somebody that lost a son to a tragedy, drug drug problems, alcohol problems, um, entrepreneurs. Um, I wanted to make sure that every you know major uh, category of people um, were represented. So there'd be something in there for everyone. So somebody might read it and think, well, I'm not going to be a physicist or a spiritual guru, but there might be another chapter, you know, about what a nurse faces or a businessman and with all those kinds of tips. So those were very helpful. And I have to say that even though I wrote the book uh, wanting to help others, I helped myself. <laughs> And they do say that a lot of uh, writers, they'll do that, uh, where you, you have suffered your own, something yourself, and then you find a way through the writing to um, help other people. And then it becomes this journey, not just for uh, the person that's reading it, but the person writing it as well. And that's what Cynthia Sue did for me. Uh, she was just a, a really a, a magical such a wonderful person. Like I said, I felt like I was floating on air after the interview. And and she was very gracious and gave um, guidance on how uh, regular people could, could tap into that as well. So that was my favorite chapter in the book. But she herself, just like all the other people in the other, uh, other 10 chapters, had faced difficulties. Like nobody's story was somebody that just was born with a silver spoon in their mouth and never had a problem. All of these people had problems. All of them had negativity and took a journey um, on how to um, get rid of it through their life and share it. And they were willing to share it and be interviewed for the book. So um, I think that's, I think, been the happiest part of writing it, knowing something has touched other people. And, uh, and in the journey to be, you know, happier, as I think we all want to be. I don't think anybody wants to be unhappy. I mean, certainly some people are very good at making our gas go to grow. But really, uh, I think we all want to be happy. You know, that it's uh, much better for our psyche, for ourselves, for those around us to just even just a little bit. If we can just embrace a little bit of that, then to me, that that's uh, that's what's really important. It's an important message. Yeah, there is a song that I want to sing um, with the two minutes we have left, and and it was done. Let me see if I can look up the lyrics to it. But it's um, and I don't get to do this very often, just in cases like this when we're short of time. Um, let me. See. I'm trying to look up the song. It's called the song is called the song itself is called Smile, and I'm gonna probably not gonna have time to sing the whole song to you, but here we go. But I'm gonna I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to do a little bit of it, and let me know what you think. Smile, though your heart is aching. Smile, even though it's breaking. When there are clouds in the sky, you'll get by. It. The lyrics are. <laughs> the, there's more lyrics to it, but yeah, but that song right there really. Take a listen to it on YouTube if you have not had the chance, and it's a, it's a really wonderful, wonderful song, and and it'll give you that kind of reminder though to smile, and um, da da, make your life is all worthwhile. If you'll just smile. But yeah, look it up on YouTube. It's a it'll give you that kind of reminder to smile. Alright, um, where can people get a hold of you? The um oh it the well for buying the book we talked about that for Amazon.com. But um, I I also if you Google Wix W I X and my name that they'll be able to see my website and uh, and they can contact me that way. Well, as we always say around here, our conversation could go on forever if we wanted it to. But as far as the show is concerned, we have to end our conversation here as we have ran out of time. My guest has been Sally Marks, author of Erase Negativity and Embrace the Magic Within, published by Creates Mates. 
can be found on Amazon and other bookstores and websites, and I thank you for joining us. And I'll be back next week with another guest to talk to. Until then, for Sally Marks and all of us on the Jacob Pyle Show, I'm Jacob Pyle. Thank you for watching, and good night, everybody. If you want to be a guest on The Jacob Pyle Show, or if you'd like a DVD copy of tonight's program, send Jacob an email. His email address is jtpyle1 at aol.com. Or if you're ordering a DVD copy of tonight's program, send $10 check or money order to The Jacob Pyle Show, care of Pyle Media Ventures, Post Office Box 154, Noblesville, Indiana 46061. Please include the air date seen on your screen when ordering. Residents outside of Indiana add $5 shipping and handling. This is Zach Brown speaking for the Jacob Pyle Show, a Pyle Media Ventures presentation. This program has been pre-recorded.